Hey y'all, and welcome back from our brief but well-needed break. I'm your host, Amaje, and this is Rewatch. And every week, I'm watching your favorite shows. But this week, I think we're watching my new favorite show because our show number five is HBO's Insecure. Y'all, when this show first dropped on Netflix, my app literally sent me a notification and I had to do what needed to be done. I'm so jazzed about this show, y'all. I love it so much so far. In the first episodes of the show, I didn't think I was going to like it so much, but oh my God, that quickly changed. So Insecure ran from October 9th, 2016 to December 26th, 2021, and it was comprised of five seasons, totaling like 44 episodes. This week, I watched season one, which was only eight episodes, and the episodes are fairly short, but covered so much but like not in a messy way so anyway let's get into it and obviously there'll be spoilers because there always is honey so this show stars Issa Rae as Issa D who is one of our leads our other star is Yvonne Orji as Molly Carter our other lead so basically these besties are in their like late 20s like 29 to be exact because that's kind of how the first episode opens on Issa's 29th birthday um and they are both struggling with with relationships from like two very, very different directions though. Isa has been in a long-term relationship and is struggling right now with her boyfriend, Lawrence, and Molly can't seem to keep a man, like, at all. So in the first episode, you know how shows like to introduce you to everyone, to give you a sense of what's it gonna be like and everything? Well, for me, they introduced Isa, and it felt like they were introducing me. It was so awkward. Like, the secondhand embarrassment was so difficult, and I think it's because I relate to her a little bit too much. But the first time we meet Isa, she's in a classroom full of like teenage kids for the nonprofit she works for called we got y'all she's giving her a little speech and then the kids start going in on her and this episode is literally titled insecure af but you know with the actual bad word in it that i'm not going to say because my very christian mother would kill me but anyway the kids start blasting her first they come after her accent asking why she talks like a white girl been there then they start talking about her hair and her clothes and the fact that she's been with her man for five years and not married and it's not like she can even get them back because they're you know literal children so the show does this thing where since Issa is the main protagonist she gets to talk to the audience but she's really talking to herself so in a lot of moments when she's feeling a lot of things she often gets in front of a mirror and wraps out her feelings and yes I mean rap as in rhythmic rhyming and I did say it was her 29th birthday so you know how embarrassing her rap sesh gets interrupted by a facebook message from her ex-boyfriend daniel telling her happy birthday and that he misses her meanwhile her best friend molly is thriving at work and everyone loves her she's bragging about this new guy she's been seeing and how he's so great and then he hits her with the dreadful i'm not really looking for a relationship right now text at Issa's birthday dinner she vents about that she feels like she's never the one that guys want and Issa then makes a joke about her um broken kitty <laughs> now molly's kitty works just fine and dandy but once her, a man gets it something about it just makes him want to run the other way and Issa at the dinner tells molly that since daniel popped back in her life it's got her thinking about breaking up with her boyfriend lawrence she gets some courage and decides to dump him when she gets home which molly doubts immediately and when Issa gets home lawrence tells her about his day and how it didn't go well in his interview he bombed so he asks if they can stay in instead of going out for her birthday and she reluctantly obliges and then she messages Daniel back telling him that she misses him too the next day Issa's is at work and it's very apparent that she's a token black person on her staff especially for a place that focuses on helping inner city kids which are mostly represented by black and brown children in this show when she gets there is about how the children that they're working with are pretty much not going to succeed in life and it frustrates her because she knows that that's uh, simply untrue she then suggests that they take the kids to do an activity out side of school which we do see later in the season she ends up taking a whole bunch of kids to the beach which is amazing for them at molly's office she gets in and her office mate diane is surrounded because she's sharing her news about getting engaged now earlier in the episode molly was telling diane about how her boyfriend was probably with her because he had an asian fetish so this is quite literally a smack in her face and she's quite literally taken aback by it so much so that she calls Issa to rant about it and Issa suggests that to cheer her up they go out that night not telling molly 
Molly that Daniel is also going to be at this club and she's going to pretend that she had no idea when she gets there, but she definitely does. That's for sure. Later that night, Issa is getting ready to go out and Lawrence tells her that Molly's standards are too high and she should probably lower them. Then she says maybe she should lower them like I did. Lawrence is confused, but she also kind of suggests that they break up. Then she tells him not to wait up because she's going to be staying at Molly's that night. When the girls get to the club, Molly is not with it. She feels like they're back in the hood and is judging hard. You know, Molly, one of them bougie black girls. But they decide to go for it anyway because, you know, why not? They end up having a bit of fun and Issa finally bumps into the reason that brought her there. Daniel. He's actually surprised because he didn't expect to see her there. Molly also gets approached by a handsome fellow named Jared and they hit it off and they start hanging out too. That is until Daniel dares Issa to go up since it's open mic night and a rap a little bit because he knows that she does that. And y'all, I, I don't think I can play the whole thing because it'll probably get copyrighted, but I'm going to play the best part of the song. Nobody wants you because you got a broken pussy. Nobody wants you because you got a broken pussy, broken pussy. Now, we all know who this song is about, and so does Molly. And for some reason, she decides to tell Jared that the song is about her, and he literally just walks away and bails, which is fair considering that there's a song about her ineptness that was just kind of a hit. After the girls leave the club, Issa is still amped up, but Molly is not having it. She's been embarrassed by her best friend, and she's taking it as a moment of her thriving, like girl. Then Molly accuses Issa of choosing that club because she knew Daniel was gonna be there and Issa denies it but Molly knows the truth because you know they're friends then in the middle of this conversation Issa gets a text from Daniel telling her to meet up with him and she texts him back in the middle of this heartfelt conversation that Molly is trying to have this makes her so mad so she decides to leave and Issa actually goes to hang out with Daniel even though she has a boyfriend like holy boundaries crossed so she goes to daniel's house and he gets in her car and they you know start kissing and then she pushes him away because she doesn't want to do anything because she just got out of a relationship and daniel stops her because he's not looking for a relationship and he bails on her after that after she rejects him she realizes that obviously she made a mistake about what she did to molly and she shows up at her house and apologizes and the girls have their sleepover and the episode ends so if you've been watching this show with me, you will have definitely noticed all the amazing music that's in here. Like I just find myself like vibing because all the music is so good. And you would probably be surprised to know that Solange is the musical consultant for Insecure. So she gets to, you know, basically pick out all the good music that she wants to be on the show, which is amazing. So there's a little trivia for you. So let's slide back into it. Y'all, so this is definitely one of those shows where we're going to hate the main character a lot. I say that because Issa is acting reckless already in the episode one and Molly is going to start in just about the next episode. But with that being said, I will say that the worst character this season is going to be Issa. She just does some absolutely dreadful things to almost everyone in her life and she's kind of just a selfish character too like after the breakup if you can even call it that with Lawrence she avoids coming home and speaking to him and they only talk because she runs into him at the store getting more underwear so she can stay away from home even longer like girl you're almost 30 you need to learn how to deal with confrontation after her and Lawrence decide to get back together she literally cheats on him and by cheating I mean she literally Literally hooked up with Daniel in a music studio and then immediately regrets it because you just cheated on your man who at this point is trying. He's doing his best. He got another job, though it's not the one that he wants. He's still doing something right now. He's off the couch after two years of being unemployed, girl. Then after when Daniel tries to talk to her, she avoids him. And when he finally forces her to talk to him, she reduces this man to an itch she needed to scratch. Like, girl, itches don't just ruin five year relationships, sis originally I thought that Lawrence was gonna be the hated character for me I was absolutely wrong out of the cast that were given Lawrence is low-key like the best
best character we got. He's slow to start for sure. Like he's just kind of not being a good boyfriend at the beginning. Like he doesn't take Issa out for her birthday or try to celebrate with her. He doesn't even have a job. He's on unemployment, but like he's actively getting interviews. He's just not getting the job and he's just kind of ignoring his partner's feelings, which like is bad, but also he's not in a good place right now. Dude's probably depressed. Like even when there's a woman throwing herself at him, he slyly brings up the fact that he has a girlfriend and then he does the whole, oh yeah, me and my girlfriend love doing that. Me and my girlfriend love going there. You know, that type of thing, you know, setting safe boundaries. He does have some pretty misogynistic friends though, but he's considered the good boy out of the group. Like what more could you ask for in a man? Oh, and he's cute. I forgot to say, y'all, he is a very handsome man, especially after he got his haircut because they definitely had my boy looking pretty rough when he was all unemployed and everything. And he's tall. You know, we, we love that too. We stand a tall man. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I have to go in on Molly too because she's definitely not innocent here. Like if Issa hadn't cheated, she'd probably be the worst. The whole season, the girl isn't man crazy and complains about not being able to keep a man when she's the one pushing them away every single time. Like if reading a room was her mission, she'd fail. First off, when Issa performs her rap, she proceeds to tell the guy Jared that the song was about her. Like, why would you do that? Like you can beat that info out of me, bruh. Then after he goes to her, she starts dating another guy and rushes things with him. Like, girl, you cannot make future plans on the second date. And after he dumps her because she's nuts and does the exact same thing with this other guy, but essentially makes him come to the friend's engagement party, who she's jealous of, by the way. And, you know, their theme is black and yellow because they're Asian and black. But anyway, th that's that's something different. But she hounded this guy over and over again about this engagement party. And he tells everyone that he's her boyfriend, basically out of pity. Oh, and then after... After she's drunk and embarrassed, she shows up at Jared's and sleeps on his couch. This is after she dumps him for not having a college education. They are actually solid for a while and are so cute after they get together. And then they start revealing deep, dark secrets. And his is a little bit darker than hers about him getting down with a dude only once. And she just can't get past it. Like, I understand not being able to get over something in someone's past. But the way she went about it was completely disrespectful to him as a person. Now, we love Insecure, guys, but the show would be nothing without what came before, which was a YouTube short series that Issa Rae created, and it's so funny. Make sure you guys go watch at least a couple episodes. It's on YouTube, and it's hilarious, but based on all of this, this allowed Issa to write her book called The Misadventures of Awkward Black Girl, which is basically her life story, which is pretty much all the things that we're seeing on the YouTube and in Insecure care too a lot of it is based on her life so go check those things out all right let's get back into the show now i was just gonna talk about the finale but like nearly everything that happens in the finale is because of the episode before it so i'll try to make this fast but it is what it is and you wouldn't be here if you didn't love the sound of my beautiful voice so episode seven is titled Real AF. Just about everything, just about all the episode takes place at Issa's charity event for work and eventually comes crumbling down in just a few hours. Molly, while out to lunch, runs into an old friend from college and they have a quick chat about how her life is going. And she casually drops a dime about how she's been in therapy and it's helped her grow to value herself more. And Molly tells Issa about it, but like in a negative way, which makes no sense to me. Like Molly is a college educator lawyer and she's ragging on therapy like girl bffr but anyway isa is basically like uh that's good for her and that molly could benefit from therapy too like it's clear to us the audience like it's clear to us the audience that this statement offended molly but isa just doesn't see it because she's too occupied with planning her event lawrence who's been working at best buy has gotten a job offer in his tech field but he wants to turn it down so he can work on his app but isa doesn't think that's a good idea right right now like she's been supporting this household for like two years <laughs> i get it so as the event is going on molly is just incredibly rude during the whole thing she's just sneak dissing the whole fundraiser when one of the teachers Issa works with who is 
fairly attractive, introduces himself and offers to get her a drink, which are free because it's an open bar. She turns him down, which is within her right. But then after he leaves, she says a terrible stereotype about Asian men. And I almost forgot the juiciest part of this episode. Y'all, Daniel shows up. Yes, the Daniel that Issa cheats with. And Lawrence is obviously there too because he's supporting his girlfriend. Now, Lawrence starts to notice that when Daniel gets there, the energy of Issa and Molly dress changes and then he listens in on a conversation between Issa and Daniel with her asking him to leave and so he gets suspicious and so he gets suspicious towards the end of the episode Issa confronts Molly about her attitude that she's had all day and Molly tells her about how she's upset about the therapy comment and Issa does not hold back y'all she goes in about how she's the problem in all her relationships and accuses her of being mad that she can actually keep a man oh and of course Molly fires back at her because of her cheating thing and Molly leaves upset and once again shows up to Jared's this time sober and trying to get him back and of course he's tied to her BS and shuts the door in her face as he should. At the end of the fundraiser Issa is congratulated by her boss and she's riding high. That is until she gets home and Lawrence confronts her head on and straight up and asks did you cheat on me with Daniel? (laughs) and there's no point in lying so she just tells him yes and he's angry and he tries to leave and she stands in the front of the door begging him over and over and he's just like move and like y'all I I thought he was gonna move her or hit her or something because she had a fantasy about that and I was like Lord I hope he ain't the hitting the girl type but anyway now episode eight appropriately titled broken AF Lawrence has been a ghost for three days he's been sleeping on his friend's couch avoiding Issa this girl decides decides to show up at his brand new job to talk to him like a crazy person. He tells her that he's done with her and to stop calling him incessantly. At work, Issa is forced to call Molly and thank her for the donations that she gave. And she sees it as an opportunity to force her to talk to her. I low-key feel bad for Issa because two of her safe people are icing her out. And one of them has a pretty good reason. Issa asks Molly if she's going on their mutual friend's birthday trip. Issa asks Molly if she's going on Kelly, their mutual friend's birthday trip. And Molly dryly answers and rushes her off the phone. On the ride, the two girls are silent and acting generally awkward towards each other. So once everyone gets to the fancy Airbnb, they get dressed up to go out. And while they're having a good time, some college guys are attracted to the birthday girl, Kelly and Molly, right? The ladies drink and dance with the boys all night. And Molly ends up taking her boy home and has a a good time with him. And watching it, I thought we were going to get like a split screen between Kelly and Molly, you know, because it's her birthday. But Kelly gets too drunk to take her guy home. And I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like we need to have more intimate moments with plus size women. Like they showed us that Kelly was desirable and wasn't the butt of a joke like we've seen in the past. So that was great. But it's important that more stories like hers get a spotlight. And I know, I know enough with the tangent. This show is about Issa and Molly right now. My bad, y'all. Anyway, the next night, things get weird because everyone starts talking trash on each other. Tiffany, the other friend, calls Issa out for pretending that she and Lawrence are still together because she cheated on him. And Kelly gets jumped on for being 30 and still immature. Then... Tiffany gets called out on for trying to be perfect and bougie all the time. Oh, and then it's Molly's turn. And she proclaims that she's going to start doing whatever she wants and whoever she wants. And the girls laugh in her face because that's exactly what she's been doing all the time. And she is just taken aback. So while the girls weekend has been happening we've also been getting Lawrence's POV he goes to a strip club with his buddies and remember he's still seen as the good boy of his group they're all throwing cash at the girls and talking about the strippers in very gross ways that I don't want to repeat then Lawrence decides to show the guys that he's not a punk and asks for a private dance and she takes him to the back and she does what you know the strippers do and she gives him a lap dance and then some zipper start to go down and so does she 
And then she states her prices and he is just not interested after that. And I feel like it wasn't like a money thing. I think it was more of the fact that he didn't want to have to buy affection because he knows that he's worth more than that. After this encounter, he calls Issa on the phone for the first time since he left her and he's drunk and awkward. Then he starts talking about how he hates sleeping on the couch at his buddy's place. And she suggests that he sleeps at their apartment since she's gone for the weekend. He agrees that that's a pretty good idea and they hang up. Issa sees this conversation as a sign that he is willing to work things out with her. She decides that she needs to head back home right away so she asks the girls to drive her back. She must have forgot that this is a girls trip and everyone is hammered so she tries to order an Uber but like it's 1am and nothing is pinging. Molly knows how much of a big deal that this is to her best friend even if they aren't as solid as usual so she grabs the keys and the two hit the road. They exchange apologies and she takes Issa to her apartment. Issa walks into the apartment looking for him and she finds his pillow gone and his keys left on the counter. And we get a quick view of what Lawrence is doing now. And he is smashing the banker girl who's been crushing on him for the whole season. Issa comes back outside. Issa comes back outside and Molly is her shoulder to cry on in season one ends there. I feel like everything that went down in this episode was like a wake up to everyone. Like it seemed that everyone was in their small little world of secret lies and denial and hopefully this shakes them out of it for season two. And y'all, I I ain't even gonna lie, I've already finished season two and it's amazing and I think I like it even better than season one. I couldn't stop laughing. It is so funny. I can't wait to share my favorite parts with you guys. So I will see you guys next week. Um, Amazing Make sure you are uh, like and subscribe to all the pages so you can get the notifications and the links when everything drops. We're on the YouTube. Make sure you're watching over there. Watch wherever you want and make sure you're sharing with your friends. You know, maybe we talk about one of their favorite shows and they fall in love with me. (laughs) All right, guys. Thank you. I'll see you next week. Don't try to catch me. Bye.